I want to welcome everyone to the last thematic issues event for chemical reviews of the year. We'll have more next year, so don't worry about that. And I want to welcome you to uh, this event on gold chemistry. So now I'm going to introduce our guest editor, Stephen Hashmi, who will then um, give an introduction and introduce the speakers. Welcome, everyone. So I start now? No. Yes, you can go ahead, Stephen. Thank you. I can go again. So to all the audience, to all the speakers, to all the staff of Chemical Reviews, a warm welcome for this, depending on where you are, morning, afternoon, or night session. I'm very happy that you could join us on this thematic talk series on the special issue on gold chemistry. It's a very exciting field. And you see, we have come a long way. If you look at the beginnings where people were studying like stoichiometric coordination compounds, very early results like Nesmeyanov's aurophilic interaction, Schmidt-Bauer, who joined in and did a lot of chemistry, inorganic chemistry. He was one of the great people in the field. Jonathan Fackler from the US or Antonio Laguna from Spain have all done major contributions in their time. And if you look at the development after a lot of inorganic and then organometallic chemistry, many, many applications of gold, metallic gold as material followed, which of course are not in this special issue on gold chemistry. And at the end, feels like catalysis, first heterogeneous catalysis, subsequently homogeneous catalysis also came in. And all of this together made the former totally inert gold become reactive chemical alive for us in that field. And after a lot of single reviews scattered out in the literature, something here on that topic, something there on another topic, we finally had the chance to assemble this special issue for chemical reviews. If you look at the field as a whole, it was a difficult decision which topics for the individual reviews to choose and which authors. And the idea was to take things which have not been covered like half a dozen times already in the last years and things where we can say it's opening new aspects and, and it needs to be in chemical reviews. So this afternoon, we will have four speakers and the lineup was designed by mixing different fields in chemistry. So we have some inorganic chemistry, we have coordination chemistry, we have light catalysis and other catalysis, strained compounds, not so strained compounds. Everything is involved. And we also try to switch to the different areas. So the first speaker, she will be from Europe. Second speaker will be from the UK, which is not Europe anymore at the moment. And then we will have a speaker from China, and then we will go south in the Pacific Ocean and have a speaker from Australia. So with these words, I now want to hand over to Professor Shimeno. For me, it's Concha. Concha, welcome. Thank you for joining. She worked for some years in Zaragoza in Spain, together with Antonio Laguna, now has become totally independent. Antonio is retired for many years. And she is a true expert in the field of inorganic and organometallic gold chemistry. And that being said, I hand over to Concha. Please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you so much. So thank you, Stephen. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. So thank you very much for the presentation. Okay. And for the invitation to this thematic talk series dedicated to gold chemistry. 
So gold is a very special element uh, uh, with uh, physical properties are very extraordinary. Uh, gold has the lowest electro electrochemical potential and the highest electronegativity among all these metals. That's confirming its novel character. So that means that the compounds are thermodynamically metastable to reduction to elemental gold. So this chemical inertness has been made that gold chemistry has been underrepresented in the last uh, years. Uh, relativistic effects are very important and play a, a, a really a key role in, in gold chemistry. Uh, that means that the, uh, there is a decrease in the uh, gap, uh, energy gap between the uh, S and the orbitals, and this causes the unusual yellow color of the gold, and also the formation of two hybrid orbitals that uh, favors the linear uh, geometry found for uh, gold one complexes. Another important and relevant contribution of the relativistic effects is the formation of gold gold interactions. Uh, the research that has been done in the last years taking uh, in, into account all these properties uh, has been made looking for application in catalysis, in medicine or in materials chemistry. And consequently, gold compounds with uh, excellent bioactivity or with uh, uh, optical properties have been reported in the last years. In catalysis, milestone has been the uh, discovery of the excellent catalytic activity of supported gold nanoparticles or small gold clusters, and also the excellent carbophilicity uh, showed by gold uh, complexes. Uh, to, this, uh, to facilitate this research in gold chemistry, the design on special ligands has been very important. Uh, these uh, are strong donor ligands, mainly carbon donor ligands, uh, phosphine ligands, or means uh, uh, phosphorus carbon or carbon carbon or carbon nitrogen uh, ligands. They are also, uh, also excellent, uh, have also excellent electronic and steric properties, which are easily modulated, uh, just changing the substituents in, in the ligands, and uh, all of this has contributed to the uh, synthesis of elusive uh, gold complexes. So this uh, review covers the main developments in gold coordination chemistry, uh, emphasizing the most uh, relevant type of complexes in the last 10 years. And here we are going to see some of the, uh, these examples. So the first one are the gold fluorides. So the gold fluoride bond is very reactive and uh, it can be used, for example, stronger ligas to stabilize uh, the gold complexes. In the last year, some of them have been prepared and they have found to be important in catalysis. So the first example was prepared by Sadiki and co-workers using n heterocyclic carbines by reaction with hydrogen fluoride. Since then, other gold 2 and gold 3 species have been developed. For gold 3, it's necessary to uh, use xenon bifluoride as oxidant. And uh, all the other examples have been prepared, uh, always using n heterocyclic carbines, cyclometallated ligands, and also trifluoromethyl derivatives. Gold hydrides has also been elusive complexes because the high uh, potential, the uh, redox potential of gold, reduction of the uh, metal center uh, has uh, taken place because the hydrate ligand. The first examples uh, were prepared, uh, prepared by Xu and Sadiki, also using n heterocyclic carbines. And Bokman and co-workers prepared the first examples of gold, uh, gold free hydrides with cyclometallated ligands. This ligand provides high uh, uh, a high stability to the final complex, preventing reductive elimination pathways. Other gold 3 uh, hydra derivatives have been prepared also with cyclometallated ligands. The synthesis of car uh, stable sing singlet carbines has been very important in organometallic chemistry. Uh, the complexes found application in all the chemical sciences. And uh, uh, the most important are uh, N-heterocyclic carbines and cyclic alkyl amino carbines. Uh, the latter has a stronger uh, nuclear, uh, phyllis, uh, uh, nucleophilic character and then providing very uh, strong uh, complexes. 
There are several methods to prepare this type of complexes, and uh, some of them they are outlined uh, here. And uh, for example, they are the use of uh, uh, free carbines and uh, transmetallation reactions using silver salt or copper salts. And uh, gold is isocyanized, and more recently, more uh, mm, other methods have been developed, more straightforward methodologies using wheat bases as potassium carbonate or acetyl acetonate in very mild conditions. To number uh, some application of this, uh, those carbines, here we can see the work development by Noplan and co-workers who prepare uh, symptoms uh, uh, which are this mononuclear hydrosy and denuclear hydrosy species which are important as precursors for organometallic uh, uh, complexes and also they are excellent uh, silver free uh, catalyst in many organic transformations. Also these uh, three coordinated gold complexes have been prepared and are very interesting because the luminescent properties. They are prepared starting for the gold uh, NAC precursors by reaction with bidentate rigid diphosphines and uh, the final derivatives present excellent quantitative, almost quantitative uh, quantum yields. The emission of the complexes can be fine-tuned by modification of the uh, substituents in uh, the NA silicon. Gold also is very appropriate to prepare supramolecular structures as uh, those uh, collected here because the linearity of the gold complexes allow to uh, find different assemblies as for example these in triangles and rectangles and cylinders gold, uh, with gold uh, uh, with enetrocyclic carvings. Also, the use of conjugated system uh, functionalized with uh, an heterocyclic carbine provide different supramolecular assemblies of different dimensions. These complexes are also very interesting for, catalyti for catalysis and also because uh, they optical properties. Bertrand and co-workers made an important contribution to uh, the development of organometallic chemistry uh, just uh, synthesizing this gold zero complex. It was uh, synthesized uh, starting from the bis carbon by reduction with potassium. The paramagnetic gold complex uh, has an ampere electron who is local, uh, delocalized in the p orbital of the ligand of the carbon and the gold. If the re, uh, reduction has uh, taken place with lithium, uh, the first legal species was achieved. Bokman and co-workers uh, also uh, developed this uh, uh, series of gold uh, complexes with cyclic alkene aminocarbines which have uh, um, ten, uh, uh, um, uh, present uh, the thermally activated delay fluorescence. Uh, in this case, the presence of a robust donor uh, ligand that can be uh, a good P acceptor and a carbazole or similar derivatives that are good electron donors uh, are very important for the properties. These are very uh, suitable to uh, develop OLED uh, devices. Cationic gold carbine complexes are also very interesting and have been invoked as uh, uh, intermediates in many catalytic reactions. Uh, there is some controversial about the uh, structure and nat nature of the bonding in these carbines and then it can be from a gold carbine, singlet gold carbine and a uh, gold carbocation and with different degrees of sigma and p bonding but usually the bone order is one. So the first examples were prepared with a uh, uh, heteroatom stabilization that uh, will stabilize the complex because electron delocalization and the first example uh, with an active towards alkene cyclopropanation that is a typical reactivity of carbines was prepared by Fusner and co-workers. Later on Stroud and Winderhofer prepared the first examples lacking of the heteroatom stabilization. The uh, complex with a shorter gold carbon bond was uh, uh, reported by Bogisou with a bidentate carburane diphosphine. And Echabarren prepared the first sample with a real carbon light reactivity. 
So Alliance has been uh, some companies that have also been uh, developed in the last years. And for example, the first P Alliance derivatives, of all one P Alliance, were reported by Windehofer and co-workers using an heterocyclical bean and phosphine ligands. The first sigma alanyls uh, were reported by us using this proper yield phosphonium uh, uh, as the alien source, and a ratio selectivity was observed uh, with GOL1 or with GOL3. GOL1 coordinates to the uh, gamma uh, alpha carbon of the uh, alin, whereas uh, GOL3 coordinates to the less substituted gamma carbon. Also, Hasmi and co-workers prepared this uh, sigma alanyl starting with this phenyl propene. Also, the final complex was more, in, uh, more unstable. Allelene ligands uh, are compounds that are known for mm, many metals and many transition metals uh, since long time, but they were uh, not uh, known for gold. Uh, in the last year, this uh, family of complexes have been reported um, for several authors, and usually the method of preparation starts from the alkyl or the proper yield group, uh, gold complexes, and just by reaction, methylation or hydrate uh, extraction, we obtain the final allylidines complexes. Another example of gold uh, three P complexes, they were not uh, 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 known until uh, quite recently. And here there are some examples with uh, P alkenes uh, described by Bogman, Tilset, and Bogisu. Uh, in these uh, examples, calculation uh, has been made, and some uh, a weak uh, red P uh, back donation from the gold to the olefin uh, was. Uh, uh, detected uh, enough to stabilize the final complexes. Uh, also, they have been described by the group of Burisu, some examples with P arenes and P alleles. A hot topic nowadays in, in gold chemistry is the gold redox uh, chemistry. So, this part from oxidative addition to gold one is not a, 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 an easy task because the high redox potential that uh, present the metal and also because the change in the condensation number uh, with the oxidation. So, in this field, uh, uh, Bogisu and those have been crucial uh, contributions uh, because they report the easily oxidative add addition of these three uh, coordinated gold complexes with aryl jodides or the uh, easy uh, add oxidative addition of this uh, biphenylene to the NAC gold complex. This final complex the, uh, reported here is an excellent uh, Lewis acid catalyst. So here we have some examples of the uh, special ligands designing and special gold complexes designing for this gold redox chemistry and reaction, uh, stoichiometric reaction and uh, also uh, a catalytic cross coupling reaction have been reported. Usually, uh, these favors, uh, these are favored by uh, the use of bimetallic gold complexes, three coordinated gold complexes, gold derivatives with ligands with a suitable coordination environment, and also using gold with uh, PN emilabile uh, bidentate ligands. Also, uh, in our review, uh, the synthesis of uh, pivotal uh, structures uh, uh, with uh, different catalysts uh, have been uh, included that are uh, prepared in the last years. They are all uh, aesthetically hindered complexes, as this one uh, uh, reported here by Hasmi, which present an excellent catalytic activity, and also structures, uh, chiral uh, scaffolds, that uh, try to circumvent the problems of the linearity of goal one. A special mention deserves this goal three uh, square planar uh, coordin uh, coordination uh, complex that has uh, a uh, chiral scaffold close to the catalytic side. This uh, complex presents uh, excellent enantioselectivities and some reactions. 
So to summarize as conclusions of this uh, charter, we can say that legal design has been crucial for the isolation of elusive complexes and also the high knowledge of uh, organogold chemistry in the last years and the nature of reactive carbines has been very important uh, to, um, uh, to see the uh, catalytic intermediates in many uh, catalytic reactions. Also, the improved chiral gold catalyst for asymmetric uh, reaction has been improved. Also, there is still a challenge in, in this area. Uh, Agreed advances have been made in gold free chemistry in and in gold redox catalysis. Also, and uh, for future advances in this field uh, will uh, be in function of the studies to improve properties of the complexes and also in the interest of the research in fundamental chemistry, but not only uh, a new bonding situations and reactivity paths. So, I want to thank all of you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Concha. Well done. Thanks a lot also for staying perfectly in time. Now it's time, of course, to answer some questions when we need some questions. So to the audience, we have left of the, on the screen, left of the chat box, we have another box which is for questions and answers. So if you have any questions, you should probably type it in there. And I click and I don't see any questions yet. But this gives me the chance to answer an initiating question. Concha, in your introduction, you had this cycle with like material science, catalysis, and life science medicine as possible fields of usage. So the question would be, what about life science? I, I don't see much in the literature. And remember, in the old literature, you find Ridaura, Auranophene, and so on, all this stuff which was used for polyarthritis treatment and yeah. now uh, people are talking about cancer but is there something exciting going on well yeah there are many many gold complexes that are being uh, studied for uh, car cancer treatment really our finishes in clinical trials for several types of cancer nowadays uh, so they are in phase uh, two of clinical trials but also um, there are a lot of complexes that they are being developed for uh, for this uh, for this season, illness, so yes, there's, yeah, there's a lot of uh, research going on in in gold complexes for several authors uh, in, in in cancer, not only in cancer, that now they are studying also for uh, coronavirus and, ah. and other yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it plays a role in the detection of the virus. Well, uh, nanoparticles are uh, gold nanoparticles. All yeah. nanoparticles are key for detection, so they are using in exactly. many, many tests. Yeah. And they are very sensitive. This is a mini amount which yeah. is in there. That's this true. is not, not mm -hmm. even not even fractions of a milligram. It's almost nothing, just dust. Okay, so I'm still looking in this window for questions. Okay, there's a question from Pfizer Diaba. How stable are these gold catalysts? Could they be recycled? Well, uh, I, I did not work the, with this catalyst because I, I, they are having uh, been prepared for, uh, for other authors, but I can say that this uh, catalyst is very, very stable because they are stabilized because the 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 buildness of the of the ligand. So the, I, found, I think they are very stable. I don't know if I recyclable. Uh, maybe some of them they are, but probably not. I I am not sure about that. Uh, I I don't have any. Ah, there's a second question. Ah, questions coming in. Thanks on one hand. Then Aaron B. Matthew, can gold be used as a tracer in biological systems? So this becomes to uh, well, and other fields then. Yeah. Yeah, well, gold can be used as a tracer in biological system. That's true. You need to be that. Uh, you need to use luminescent complexes. Uh, for example, we are working in um, uh, gold luminescent complexes as diagnostics or, or uh, uh, for the uh, diagnosis, and, and then it's, it's possible to use. You need that the complex has optical properties and they are suitable in solution, of course, and they are so. Uh, 
is uh, are good for for these purposes. And from Brian Molto, there's a question out of curiosity: Do you think the oxidative addition of iodine to calcogen, gold calcogen, is possible? Calcogen. Mm. Well, uh, the, the oxidative addition of uh, iodine over linear gold complexes is, is always possible. It's possible yes, in many never complexes. Say never again, no? so <laughs> I, I suppose in this com special complex as well, but it's, uh, it was with all the complexes, the oxidative addition of iodine. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. Juan Shan. Thanks for the nice summary of gold chemistry. Can you provide some insight into the ligand design for gold catalyst? Electronically, why would NHC ligand become the popular trend? That's a good question. Okay, yes, for gold catalysis, well, there are um, two, two, two factors, electronic and aesthetic properties. So it's clear that the aesthetic properties are very important because uh, of, uh, it, it gave and, and the stronger uh, donor uh, ligands. Uh, stronger donor ligands provide more stable complexes and then uh, really are very important uh, for this development. So, uh, in heterocyclic carbene, not only in heterocyclic carbene, acyclic uh, alkyl amino carbenes and acyclic diamino carbenes, all sort of singlet carbenes stable single carbines are very important for catalysis because most of the samples I, I put in the last uh, slide they were prepared with this sort of uh, ligands and, and I think they are really uh, uh, together with uh, bush wild type phosphine more developed bush wild type phosphines are really the most important uh, in, in catalysis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. So, Concha, I think we are at the end of the questioning time as well. So, once again, thank you for your input. Thank you. We are very, thank you. very happy about these insights. And now I switch to, to the UK. Manfred Bochmann is the next speaker. I had the honor to meet him for the first time on a symposium on gold catalysis in London. And we had intense discussions there, and I immediately noticed he is really a very fundamental coordination organometallic chemist with a brilliant knowledge in this field. People who know me know my background is in organic chemistry, and I know some organometallic chemistry, I can do this well. But Manfred, he, he knows all the details and his analysis and so on are always striking. And he now will present to us, Manfred, are you ready? Yeah, gold three I catalysis. You can hear me? Well, yes, can you, you can hear what's me? Okay. new? Manfred, the stage is yours. We are looking forward to Thank your Thank you very much. Yes, I, I, I shortened the originally advertised uh, title to what's new and I put what's new in inverted commas because what's new was what my old boss used to say on his daily round of the laboratory and it's still ringing in my ears. Um, so gold is uh, being much used nowadays in catalysis and so we'll start if you want to compare with a typical catalytic cycle we're all familiar I think uh, with a sort of a generalized cycle here expressed for say nickel or palladium where uh, the metal changes by two oxidation states and you have state like oxidative addition and reductive elimination and some other reactions in between and then sometimes there is a vacant coordination site to which an unsaturated substrate can uh, coordinate that then leads to insertion and if this unsaturated substrate is CO then you get an acyl complex and if it's an olefin then you get higher alkyls and then typically we would write have no hesitation in writing down that of course such a structure can then regenerate the original zero valent catalyst by a reductive elimination step. Now if one applies all this to gold chemistry the results of the last uh, um, 15, 20 years have probably shown there is problems. There are problems with pretty much every one of these steps. So oxidative addition, reductive elimination don't seem to be quite so straightforward because of gold's particular properties. Uh, the binding of unsaturated substrates also often postulated in many catalytic cycles as a starting point or reagents again has rarely been seen for 
gold species. Then, of course, the field of insertions is largely conspicuous by its absence compared to other metals. And finally, there are lots of question marks about reductive elimination, which turns to be quite a high barrier process in gold catalysis. So if one wants to build a gold catalysts, um, one should perhaps not necessarily think they work exactly like the all too well and familiar uh, palladium catalytic cycles. There is a difference. This difference is also highlighted by the fact that you know, if one compares gold three and platinum two, the two elements are neighbors in the periodic table and both elements are subject to very strong relativistic effects and one would therefore expect similar bonding patterns. But of course, platinum has generated some of the earliest examples of prototypic or organometallic species, whereas these compounds written down here, these gold halides, uh, were known and remain known to this day. And in fact, the reaction of carbon monoxide with gold trichloride was as early as 1905, described as an excellent way of making gold colloids. So the gold colloids will no doubt have plagued most gold chemists till the cows come home. So there are differences, but some of these boxes have been ticked, although I would say they have been ticked to a very limited extent. So using uh, a ligand framework which restricts reactivity, and of course there's a vast, vast uh, chemistry on pincer ligands where this trick has been used, that then allows olefin and alkyne and CO complexes to be generated. There are a number of them. There's one solitary example of an isolable CO complex. Um, then there are diene compounds. The first one reported by um, Tilts, a group with methyls. And we subsequently found that if one replaces these methyls with something that is a wee bit more electron withdrawing, these rather thermally unstable complex become quite useful starting materials. So this is quite a nice, stable, easily made compounds. But that does not mean having ticked these initial boxes and shown that these things can actually exist doesn't mean that one knows an awful lot about how these species are bonded in catalysis because none of these species, as we see here on these slides, have a pronounced catalytic chemistry. So there is, compared to pretty much every other element in the periodic table, still an awful lot of detailed experimental work to be done. If one wants to summarize gold three and its reactivity, what sticks most uh, that's the most prominent characteristic is that it's a strong Lewis acid and that it reacts as a Lewis acid. There is much lower backbonding even than for platinum two, which is not exactly prominent in the backbonding scale. Uh, that makes any such substrate like CO and others uh, bonded to such a metal center extremely susceptible to nucleophilic attack. Now that can be very good for the catalysis and certainly explains why carbon or not by a gold, for example, in the reaction with CO is a better water gas shift catalyst than platinum and works at lower temperatures, even heterogeneous gold catalysts. One can also find that the alkyne adducts show pronounced vinyl cation character, and that again explains their very high reactivity. Then, as Conchita has already pointed out, other species have been found which are also. Uh, important in many catalytic cycles, the gold hydrides, and most recently gold allyls. And the fact that allyl compounds of a transition metal reported only as recently as 2020 by the Borisou and the Tilsit group uh, gives um, uh, provides an example of how much there really is to do in terms of fundamental understanding. It also is a very nice example how extremely dependent structure bonding and reactivity in gold compounds is on the supporting ligand. This uh, Bourisou ligand, this uh, phosphenonaphthal, seems to turn gold in as near as damaged palladium in its turn, in the way it binds and reacts. So this gives a nice delocalized allyl, whereas the CN compound, as Tilsa could show, certainly is not a delocalized pi allyl, it's a highly fluxional system. So key complex types have now been found, but the formation and the observation is very ligand specific. And if one wants to understand how these things really behave in catalysis, then further more labeled species need to be identified. 
if one wants to understand the reactivity of gold three, uh, one really needs to start with the trans influence. This is one of the most important aspects that one cannot probably stress too highly in gold chemistry. Uh, well documented, one can, for example, show that uh, X ligand trans to a stronger donor like carbon is weaker, trans to a weak donor like a pyridine is stronger. And that means this bond is shorter than that one, although one shouldn't rely on crystallography. These bond length differences can be counteracted by other packing effects and so on. But kinetically, something that sits to trans to a good donor like carbon is more labile than something that sits trans to a weak donor, although sometimes the thermodynamic stability is the other way around and one finds a ligand exchange pro product formed. When one wants to quantify um, how much a bond trans to carbon is weaker than one to a donor like pyridine. Well, if one takes this pincer uh, ligand framework and defines for a given X, this is 100%, then the same X trans to carbon, depending on the nature of X, the bond strength is about 35 to 60%. Now that leads to differences in reactivity, as you might expect. For example, the CNC, a ligand framework gives a hydride which is thermally really quite stable even to heating, whereas the NCC uh, isomer it leads to a hydride that is thermally highly unstable. And I stress this so much because when I talked recently to uh, one uh, organic colleague uh, uh, commented about these various different types of pincer complexes, oh surely this is just so much stamp collecting. Well it isn't so much stamp collecting, one really influences the reactivity of these compounds in very fundamental ways. Uh, that can also be shown if one looks at ligand effects and uses hydride as a probe to evaluate them. So these are calculations on this hypothetical molecule and one can change the ligand then from within the spectrochemical series from typical weak field to strong field ligands. And you can find that the hydride chemical shift varies by something like 20 ppm. Uh, but one does rather more than just change the hydride NMR chemical shift. One also changes on going from a weak field to a strong field ligand. One changes the nature of the uh, frontier orbital in these gold complexes. Weak field ligands, uh, they are, the frontier orbital has very much gold d pi character. And that in turn then uh, changes the reactivity. Uh, these compounds tend to be stable to insertion by oxygen. Whereas um, if one goes to strong field ligands, then the frontier orbital becomes sigma gold hydrogen in uh, nature and these compounds tend to react and insert with oxygen. So there is a chemical consequences of changing ligand fields and ligand field strength that is of fundamental importance in catalytic applications. The strong Lewis acidity, well, um, I have to apologize first and foremost in what I say from now onwards in the uh, absolutely unforgivable subjectivity of the various examples that I've selected, but one can fi only find so much time in 15 minutes. The uh, Lewis acidity is, for example, justified, uh, uh, demonstrated, I meant to say, uh, by this frustrated Lewis pair type behavior of gold ether complexes. Even ligands as weakly basic at e as ether uh, seem to be capable of exerting sort of FLP type reactivity and induce the heterolytic uh, cleavage of hydrogen under very smooth conditions, even at low temperature. And not just hydrogen can be cleaved by such Lewis acid, but even carbon hydrogen bonds. This time it requires a higher temperature and one cannot observe these intermediates, but what one sees at the end are products that are typical of, gold, of aryl hydrogen reductive elimination from an intermediate called hydrate species. So FLP type reactivity as a consequence of Lewis acidity. <clears throat> What else can one look at in um, that is catalytically relevant? Well, the next important step is oxidative addition. And the fact that uh, the simple oxidative addition of an aryl iodide to gold one warranted to Jacques communication as late as 2014 shows the relatively undeveloped uh, state of the field. We now know that oxidative addition is facilitated if 
the gold can be forced into a geometry, the gold one precursor can be forced into a geometry that deviates from linearity. So bent systems react more readily than linear systems. There's also a nice complementarity between gold and palladium. In palladium, it is important that the RL uh, iodide or RL halide, whatever is oxidatively adding, should be electron poor because electron acceptor properties stabilize the product. In gold, it's the other way around. Electron-rich arenes uh, react more readily. That is simply because here the formation of a gold arene pi complex is very important. And this was, uh, as Conchita has already indicated, uh, demonstrated by both the Borisou and the Toster groups, where who showed that oxidative addition even of carbon-carbon bonds can be exploited to generate gold three compounds. This here is an example of an acyl, early example of a gold acyl, a sort of structure that cannot be made by CO insertion into the gold carbon bond because that would be energetically uphill. Now oxidative additions often do not uh, react in, as quickly and smoothly in one step as often is envisaged. Um, it goes via radicals. The reaction between diazonium salts uh, with gold one has been intensely investigated and rather recently the Porcel group showed that ascorbic acid can be used as a one electron reductant. This generates a radical, a radical which gives gold two under non-photolytic conditions and finally one ends up with the well stabilized and well characterized gold three end products. The existence of radicals under photolytic conditions is, of course, rather less surprising. And I've just mentioned here the now classical work by the Glorious group, um, who showed that with a photo initiator, uh, the, uh, the oxidation proceeds from gold one to gold two to gold three, and finally leads to the desired coupling product. And there has been an awful lot of work done on the photolytic uh, activation of such reactions. But not all CC coupling reactions really require full scale oxidative addition. So one needs to be very careful in assigning uh, reaction cycles. And this has been exemplified by this nice work quite recently by the group of Fensterbank in Paris, uh, who used this gold vinyl, gold one vinyl compound, reacted it with this iodo acetylene and this seems to be all set up for clean oxidative addition to give a gold acetylene iodide complex. Uh, but I've written here as a reminder the standard potential uh, which is very high and very positive although of course these potent we don't work in one molar acid so these potentials in a way are highly modified under our reaction conditions with different ligands. But nevertheless it's uphill it's an uphill struggle to oxidize gold one to gold three and indeed the computational analysis of this reaction by Fensterbank showed that the two reagents react with one another and the final, the acetylene sort of slides into position without ever producing a full blown gold three intermediate. If one looks for one, then this intermediate here is the closest thing you get along this reaction cascade for a gold three, but one would be hard pushed to say this really is one. And so uh, another hurdle, uh, activation barrier is simply bypassed by the significant flexibility that gold shows in its reaction pathways. Oxidative addition is followed by reductive elimination and I've listed here the calculated reductive elimination barriers for this very open flexible system calculated by Dutta some years ago. The origin and the incentive to do this work was the, to explain the rather unusually high rate of reductive elimination of a parafluorophenol that had been observed by the Torster group. You can see that hydrogen-hydrogen reductive elimination should be extremely facile, similarly hydrogen phenyl uh, and so and uh, uh, all the way up to methyl-methyl which should be a very difficult reaction. Now this is the work that I just alluded to, report by Torsten that the RL-RL coupling is initiated by triphenylphosphine, 
the idea is that the phosphine generates a sterically encumbered cation of this nature which could not be observed and even at minus 52 degrees leads to a reductive elimination product in a very fast reaction. One takes chelate ligands which uh, provide greater stability. Reaction is not as fast and not quite as facile, but one can follow it a little bit more easily. This reaction too is initiated by donor ligands L, like the methyl sulfide, and one can show that uh, the rates of reaction pretty much follow what data has calculated. Vinyl is fastest, aryl is slower, very much faster than a C6F5, and finally methyl methyl coupling is the slowest of all. One should, however, keep in mind that sterics are important. Rigidity imposed by a ligand framework can override these effects. And in spite of the low hydrogen-hydrogen reductive elimination barrier that was calculated, uh, this dihydride, uh, dihydride is stable in solution at room temperature. Now, not every reductive elimination is a reductive elimination. Uh, so when Torst observed that this gold 3 CF3 methyl compound gives the carbon-carbon coupling product um, in, under the influence of uh, tris c 6 f 5 borane, uh, mechanistic studies then showed that this goes via an indirect pathway. So rather than a direct reductive elimination, a fluoride is borrowed from one of the CF3 groups generating a difluorocarbene. And if one writes it down as these two uh, mesomeric forms, one can understand why the formation of such a structure should facilitate CC bond formation. The fluoride then is regained by the system and one finally uh, generates the product that looks like a straightforward CC reductive elimination, but actually is a carbene insertion. So things are often seen that sort of bypass straightforward reaction pathways. Reaction of CO into gold oxygen is facile. Reaction of CO into gold carbon is not. So CO reaction into this hydrogen gives this carboxylic acid. These are not new reactions. CO observed reaction insertion into gold methoxides have been known for quite some time. And this is another example. Uh, this is unstable and leads to at least a partial uh, modeling of the water gas shift cycle, whereas the insertion of CO into the gold methoxide is a very stable ester as shown here. And this was shown also by the Nevada group who prepared this ester for their CC for the NCC ligand framework, and they were able to show that such insertions are reversible, and indeed one unsaturated substrate can be uh, substituted by another. So the reaction with an activated acetylene gives the acetylene insertion product, and the CO is then released. And a similar reaction was uh, uh, exploited by the Hashmi group to uh, generate uh, this carboxylated product, sorry. Sorry, I've gone too far. And uh, generate this CC coupling product, not by insertion into the gold carbon bond by for formation, presumably, of this intermediate here. Insertion reactions, therefore, are an important aspect of gold 3 catalysis. There are one or two rare, I stress, examples where insertion, as one would expect for most transition metals, do actually happen. These are examples by the Bourisou group, uh, who use this uh, naphthyl phosphine system to give double <coughs> norbornene insertion, or indeed uh, single insertions of olefins into gold carbon bonds. There is a vacant coordination site here, and this clearly follows the traditional mechanistic pathway of substrate coordination to this vacant coordination site prior to a migratory insertion step. But this is very much the exception. One does occasionally see insertions of compounds that really should not have the capacity to undergo any such reactions. If one has a pincer complex, one uses the pincer ligand to prevent rather than enhance reactivity. And indeed, all, the, all uh, accessible coordination sites are blocked in such a system. Nevertheless, insertion of acetylenes was found. And also, it was found that exclusively, or pretty much exclusively, the trans-insertion product 
uh, was generated. How can that be explained? Well, it turned out that, again, gold neatly sidesteps uh, these reaction barriers that might exist towards an insertion by changing oxidation states. So formation of radicals generates a gold two radical, which then can react in this fashion by a bimolecular mechanism to very smoothly generate these acetylene, uh, these, these gold vinyl derivatives. And I should stress that although these reactions are fast, if one actually generates a radical initiator, uh, even ambient light is sufficient to generate gold radicals. So one needs to keep that in mind when one does gold chemistry. Uh, they are, these compounds are very often more sensitive to light than one gives them credit for. The termination step in many gold reactions is beta elimination. And again, I go back to a report by the Bouissou group where beta elimination in the normally understood way has been observed. The, the proteins are clearly ethylene insertion into the gold methyl. The butenes are uh, double ethylene insertion into a gold hydride following a beta elimination step. And indeed there is a chain walking sequence that would explain the formation of these uh, compounds. So clearly gold here behaves very much like one would ex palladium expect. That beta elimination is not prominent, may however, uh, be highlighted by the fact that the first organometallic gold compound this was a gold ethyl uh, prepared at the beginning of the 20th century and that clearly was uh, stable towards reductive elimination. Not every uh, beta elimination, not every beta elimination outcome is actually mechanistically a beta elimination. Uh, it has been found repeatedly for, that for most gold compounds, beta elimination is associated with a high activation barrier and simply does not easily take place. However, it turns out that such gold species as simplified depicted here uh, can on treatment with ligands ring open such that now one has available here a basic pyridine donor. This pyridine donor can act to deprotonate such a cationic intermediate and generate a product which looks all the world like an olefin uh, followed from beta H elimination, whereas in fact this was a reductive deprotonation. So the N is protonated and the olefin is extruded. And this type of reaction uh, may be more common than perhaps one gives it credit for. Uh, for example, in this reaction here of an aryl disonium salt with a functionalized olefin to give the corresponding aryllated olefin uh, was originally explained by oxidation of the gold one catalyst precursor to gold three, that is fine. And coordination of the olefin to this gold three species in, followed by insertion, followed by beta H elimination and then it is thought that this gold hydrate was deprotonated by base to, to regenerate the gold one species. Now it seems more feasible and probably easier to understand that if, if one assumes that base attack on this hydrogen leads to deprotonation, generating this olefin and at the same time generates the original gold one species without having to encompass the hurdle of making a gold hydride uh, by a beta H elimination step. So there are possibilities that gold uh, escapes into low energy pathways in a way that other transition metals do not. So if one wanted to conclude what we've seen is that yes, many representative of key intermediate species often postulated in catalytic cycles are now known one can also show that gold catalysts follow palladium catalytic cycles on occasions, but only partially. And it very much depends on the ligand system that supports the gold system. The relative stability of intermediates like alkene, alkyne and CO uh, adducts of gold three are very different from that of transition metal catalysts as we know them in most cases. So gold three acts as a strong Lewis acid with very weak back donation and certainly very strong activation of unsaturated substrates towards uh, nucleophilic 
addition. Nucleophilic attack. Uh, I've mentioned that the trans influence is probably more important than almost any other metal. It dictates the kinetics and electronics of many of the gold three uh, catalyzed or mediated reactions. Uh, reaction pathways can be strongly ligand specific and alternative reaction pathways are increasingly important. So we find more and more that uh, open shell pathways rather than closed shell pathways uh, may be very relevant in gold chemistry. Gold two and radical intermediates uh, probably take part, um, even those induced by a moderate laboratory light. There are alternatives to beta H elimination. There are slip in pathways which avoid clearly defined intermediates. And one sort of looks at gold uh, almost as the diplomat of the periodic table that offers solutions to difficult reactions, even where conventional uh, reaction pathways may be associated with insurmountable hurdles. So with that, uh, I thank you for your attention. I have to thank in particular my co-author and co former co-worker, Dr. Luca Rocky Gianni, who is now an assistant professor at this old University of Perugia and all the various uh, different organizations who supported over our work over the years. And thank you for your attention. Manfred, thank you so much. Very fundamental insights you could show us. Since we are over time, I can allow maybe one question. So if someone has an urgent question, then please, please type it into the question and answer box. I briefly wait whether something is, is coming in. Manfred, the radicals, so gold two species, radicals and things like that, apart from catalysis, how common have they been in the past in stoichiometric organogold chemistry? Well, the, the uh, olefin insertion uh, was, was stoichiometric, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So um, mm. that, that also, they ha I don't think there have been much, uh, uh, there, there have been much uh, exploited. Yeah. Yeah, this is knowledge. pretty much. I have not really followed the synthetic chemistry uh, of well. gold one, yeah. but one needs, to, one needs to be careful. Uh, yes. The other thing is that if one does catalysis gold three, one needs to be aware that it's very, very easy to reduce gold three even to gold nanoparticles. And there was one paper that I found very interesting, which hasn't attracted an awful lot of attention, that say nickel spatulas and so on, these uh, things that we use, metal objects that we use in the laboratory as standard, are excellent in, general, in reducing gold three halides to gold nanoparticles. So there may many uh, organic reaction, catalyzed reactions that are actually heterogeneous rather than homogeneous in nature. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot. So I don't get any additional questions. Manfred, a very fundamental contribution. And now we switch over to China, to Jin Chi, who is now professor at the University of Nanjing, a new shooting star in China who is very active, very dynamic, and who has a great background in photochemistry. And we will learn about this now, light in gold catalysis. Jin, 15 minutes. Okay, thank you very much for your introduction. Hello, good morning. At Chatter, it's a middle right now. So also good uh, middle right to all the friends. Okay, I'm Jin Xie from Nanjing University. First, uh, thanks to Professor Hashimi and the Professor Amit Shepherd very much to give me this chance to attend the chemical review so, uh, so atomic talk series on gold chemistry and introduce this topic lighting in gold catalysis. Yeah, our this uh, chemical chemical review paper was yeah, the first author is Zila. Yeah, she is a highly talented girl now working in the in the basketball. Okay, during the past 20 years, the homo engineers go the catalysis developed very fast or, and are filled dominated by the pi activation of the unsaturated C bonds. 
uh, uh, because of its excellent uh, carbohydrate uh, pi or uh, uh, synergy. Yeah, both the gold one and the gold three can undergo the pi activation process without the change of the wallet. Yeah, due to the high the redox potential of the gold, the gold one to gold three is as high as 1.4 wallet, much higher than the player. Yeah, in recent years, the homogeneous gold catalyzed oxidative coupling become an emerging field in gold communities, especially generally speaking for the oxidative coupling, either the transmetallation first or the pi activation first. Both pathways have to uh, have to use the strong oxidant here. Certainly, direct use of the electrophile to finish the gold one to gold three catalytic cycle is a long-standing dream in gold community. Okay, on the other hand, the recent studies in visible light photoredox catalysis is a very popular way to achieve radical transformations under the mild reaction conditions. The classic lucenia, lucenia and the iridium complexes were important. Of course, some organic dyes can be used to drive the reaction. With this low activation way, the two electro reactions is the potential to proceed in single electro transfer process through either the oxidative quench or reductive quench. With the help of the light in gold catalysis, there are already some new use, some, some new use here. Uh, here, I, I will briefly introduce the recent developments of gold as the following outline. First, the mononuclear gold uh, complex in photocatalysis, including dual gold photo, uh, photo redox reactions and uh, photosynthetizer free gold catalyzed photo reactions. Second, dinuclear gold photocatalysis covering the electro transfer reactions and uh, the energy transfer reactions. Third, the gold three complexes as the photosynthetizer. Okay, for the first part, yeah, in 2013, Gruyers reported the first dual gold and the photoredox catalyzed reaction, which achieved the oxy, oxy and amylor annihilation of the arcades with annual disolier salts. Uh, very soon, Tost, Tost yeah, reported the gold catalyzed annihilative green expansion reactions. By means of the gold, uh, by means of the visible light photocatalysis. Now, now both the gold catalyst and the photosynthesizers are important for the yield. Yeah, now both the parallel work in this field have been cited uh, over the 300 times. Now let's have a look for the proposed mechanism. It's exciting to find that the gold three specials here, yeah, is uh, can be formed by two single electro transfer step. First, the other radical, yeah, which can be formed from the photocatalysis and <clears throat> and can add, can add to the gold one specials to form a gold two intermediate, which can undergo another SET process with the Lucenium three to form this gold three specials, uh, which can undergo undergoes the reductive emulation to give the products. Okay, once the generation of the gold three specials is ready, there are a dozen of intermolecular and intermolecular nuclear addition reactions can be predicted and many elegant examples that are, were reported. With the gold three specials, it is also a very good choice for the developer of the cross couplings. Toast and the Glorious reported the dual gold and the photocatalytic strategy for the uh, carbon phosphor and the carbon carbon bond coupling. Later, yeah. Fokit and Lee have independently realized the CC coupling of the aryl boric acid with the aryl dilute uh, salts of lot. Also have a very good paper from the SIS lab yeah, using the ligand without use of light. 
Later, yeah, party successful employer employed other trimester sales as a company partners to facilitate by other by other company here. Yeah, another interesting research is the combination of the gold catalyzed nuclear addition and the gold catalyzed cross company together. For example, Domino and Ye have uh, reported elegant double annulation protocols with the nuclear addition process here. Note. All of the above examples are other diesel sorts. She used the, the star from or star from cell H as the bifunctional agents and the report the dual gold and the photo catalyzed <coughs> trifluoro trifluoro metal style star star formulation reactions of the R case. Cover load, yeah, both the photocatalysis and here and the uh, gold catalysis are very important for successful reaction. The K point is still the photo redox catalysis with Lucenia to realize to realize the gold one to go the three catalytic cycle here. In 2000, in 2019, um, Fenster Bank and co workers reported the, the oxidative addition of the acryl iodide to the radio gold, gold one intermediate, uh, slow the, slow the triplate sensitization of the eroding complex. Giving rise to the benzor, benzor fluence. They <clears throat> there are metallic studies support an energy transfer element rather than an electro transfer pathway anymore. Take our special attention. All of the above examples discussed how to use the photosensitizers in 2016. Hashimi Group found that the use of blue LEDs as the light source, annual diesel results can directly achieve the oxidation of the gold one to Earlier gold three intermediates without the use of the photosensitizers. With this protocol, different earlier gold three complexes can be prepared in high yields. Later, we applied this gold, the earlier gold three intermediate in selective coupling reactions. Very importantly, the reaction of the earlier diazole sorts and the, the annual sealings can ready can readily occur with yeah, over the boron rates. Later, uh, Schulbeck and the co-workers further applied this chemistry for the selective coupling of the annual germanium uh, with over the boron rates, boron rates, boron rates, sealings, and uh, the halogens. It is inhibiting. It can, uh, excellent uh, functional group of tolerance. Of course, Toster and the co workers reported an elegant load for the synthesis of the gold three specials of uh, from the gold one with the trifluoromethyl iodides by means of the light irradiation. Okay, then we have some minutes to discuss the process of the dinuclear gold photocatalysis. About 30 years ago, Chi and, and, and the Fackler have prepared this kind of the dinuclear gold complex and studied their photochemical and photophysical properties. So they reported that it can capitalize the dimerization of the benzyl chloride and the RK and the RK bromides in the presence of the amines is elevated with the low yield. Compare, compared with the classical photocatalyst like the Lucenia and the Yerudin, yeah, the dimeric gold catalyst also has the good reducing ability, but it is, it is very easy to prepare from the DMS gold chloride in quantitative yield. That's very important because these uh, it can't be prepared in one single step. However, this is a typical black swan events in organic sensors, as no one considers this for a long time. 
Yeah, about 20 years later, in, two, in 2013, body owned and the co-workers did a really good job and they reported an elegant photoredox transformation with the dimeric gold complexes. The use of the dimeric gold catalyst as the electro trans transfer mediator and for the successful generation of the a series of radicals from corresponding organic formats. Accordingly, accordingly, many new reactions have been reported with this chemistry. Also, we have made use of the dimeric gold catalyst to achieve CH difluoroalkylation of the hydrogen and the CH activation, CH activation of the amine, the tertiary amines for the alkylation. Furthermore, the dimeric gold catalyst has, has, been applied, uh, has been applied for the polymerization to construct some polymers. It's very interesting part. Very interestingly, not only as the electro transfer mediator, Hashimi and the co-workers found that the dimeric gold complex can also act as energy transfer mediator. It is the first time to observe this function for the dimeric gold catalyst. Now, many examples covered in this topic are gold one complex discussed before. The gold three complex is rather rare for the photocatalysis. In 2012, Shi and the co workers reported that prepared or NHC, NHC, NHC gold three complex and applied it in the, in the aerobic oxidation of the amines by means of the light. Later, slow the, com the composition of this. Uh, Luminescent gold, gold uh, NHC gold three uh, complex with the morph materials, the heterogeneous uh, photosynthesizers can be prepared. Okay, we have witnessed uh, the large development of gold, uh, or gold catalyzed organic transformations with the light uh, for the past 10 years. However, the deep mechanism study of the K intermediate. The energy transfer process, discovery of the luminescent gold three complex, and the design of the polyfunctional gold catalysts are still the future direction. Okay, Barry, thank you very much for your kind attention. Okay, thank you, Jin. Great presentation on, uh, I would say, enlightening presentation in this case. So light was involved deeply. So are there questions? I look for the question, no open question. Ah, oh, there's a question coming in. Saira Banu, gold catalyst as photosensitizer could form ROS singlet oxygen. Did you check the involvement of singlet oxygen in any of your reaction protocols? Jin. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many, many reactions are performed in the argon or nitrogen. Yeah, so I'm not sure, but I think someone have, che have checked the oxygen, the single, single oxygen. But sometimes, many times, in many cases, yeah, because it involved the logical process, they have to be, have to be perform performed under the oxygen or nitrogen atmosphere. Mm -hmm. no. Thank you. Do I see more questions? No open questions yet. Jin, one, one point which brings me back to Concha's talk from the beginning. There we have seen all these aurophilic interactions and the dinuclear complexes use dinuclear species. So what about some of these trinuclear complexes or other associates using aurophilic interactions. Has any photochemistry in the sense of catalysis been observed with these? Okay, thank you very much, Professor Hashimi. This is a very, very good question. I think yeah, due to the gold gold interaction, the dinuclear gold complex allows the 
yeah, uh, has been widely used uh, as a photocatalyst, but they try for more of the poly yeah, nuclear gold catalyst, like the gold cluster. Yeah, I think uh, in the head, in the heterogeneous catalyst, someone use the the gold cluster for the for the uh, for some uh, you know, organic transformations. I think it's possible. Now in our lab, we have yeah, we are doing this. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. I don't see any additional questions, and since we are running a little bit late, my tendency would be to continue now with the next talk. Before that, let me mention that you, of course, can ask questions to the previous speakers in the chat. You can still ask questions there. And of course, you can even after the whole mini conference here is ended, uh, you can send an email and ask them a question if you suddenly have a question. So now we jump over the Pacific Ocean to the south from China and we arrive in Australia and Chris, Chris Highland, Chris, are you there? Yeah, I can see he uploads his talk. I'm here. I'm here. Hello. Hello. And I think I have the correct presentation. Yes. No, no worries. No worries. Everything is fine. So Chris is a professor at Wollongong, a very active center, a little south from Sydney, a beautiful train ride through the jungle to get there in about an hour and a half. And they do great science. And Chris will now tell us something about the gold catalyzed conversion of highly strained compounds. Chris, please go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for the, the kind introduction. and. Uh, I'd just like to acknowledge my the co-authors. Um, so this was jointly written with Professor Min Shi uh, and his co-workers Dai Yao Li and Wenqing Zhang from the uh, Shanghai Institute of Organic Chemistry and a PhD student, Melissa Bird from, from my group. So uh, no, a team effort. As Stephen mentioned, I, I, did, I did put a little uh, map here of Wollongong. It's uh, just south of Sydney and there. That's what it looks like. Well, that's what it will look like in about four hours when it's uh, morning here. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to talk about a series of strained organic molecules. And of course, we can't cover everything. So I'm going to cover a few select ones, focusing on the carbocyclic system shown in blue here. Uh, and the, 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 the strain energies are, are, are given below these. Why, why do we want to study the reactivity of these molecules in the presence of gold catalysts? Well, one, we can unleash that strain energy to design very facile reactions. In addition, these highly strained molecules can be sources of cyclopropanes because cyclopropane itself is much less strained than the methylene cyclopropane, the vanillidine cyclopropane, and the, the cyclopropene. Uh, in addition, the presence of the pi system, as nicely shown by the previous speakers, is a, is a perfect binding site for the carbophilic gold Lewis acid. In addition, we can also have tethers on these systems with other pi binding sites, and then these, uh, these carbocycles can behave as nucleophiles. I'll also touch on the, the heterocyclic systems as well very, very briefly. Okay, moving on, I'm just gonna talk about each class. First, I'm gonna look at the methylene cyclopropane. So these are the least strained of the carbocyclic systems. And I just wanna show you an example of how they can be, it can be a complementary tool to cyclopropanation uh, by carrying out a hydroarylation reaction catalyzed by gold. So this is an example where the methylene cyclopropane binds to the carbophilic um, gold one species and uh, brings about that, that nucleophilic attack as, as shown down here in, in this box. And it occurs in both a, a, a regioselective and also a diastereoselective fashion. So it's quite, quite a powerful method. And I, I think there's some really nice opportunities here for, for future catalytic asymmetric synthesis. Interestingly, the regio chemistry of this is proposed to be driven not, not by electronics, but by the different hybridization of these two, these two carbons. So the internal one is more SP hybridized. So that's quite remarkable because it's a ring preservation reaction. Um, on this next slide, I'd like to show you how two, two changes. First of all, by having a tether on the methylene cyclopropane, we can direct coordination away from the MCP. So the MCP now is not uh, electrophilic, but it behaves as a nucleophile because gold is coordinating to the alkyne. And we have a six endo-dig 
cyclization to form this carbocation intermediate. The other thing that we, we observe here is we get a ring expansion reaction. So this carbocation, this cyclopropyl carbocation uh, undergoes ring expansion to the more stabilized gold allylic carbocation. And then we have a one to, formal one two hydride shift to this methylene cyclobutane skeleton, butene skeleton. And this occurs in a, a catalytic asymmetric fashion. So this is an enantiotopic cyclopropane. So it's proposed that that ring expansion is the stereo defining step. And while the, the, the EEs are, are, are good to moderate, there's, there's plenty of scope for, for improving that. And the importance of these products can be seen by the mapping onto these important and complex indole alkaloids. So I'm just having a little, uh, <clears throat> my computer's been very slow, bear with me for a second. It's decided to not move forwards. Hold on a moment. Apologies for this. I'll just uh, let this sort itself out. <clears throat> Okay, I might need to restart that PowerPoint. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're, we're, we're back in business. <coughs> okay, Good. So, so what I just wanted to show you here was that the, we don't, uh, we can harness this carbocation in, in, in other ways. And so if you have a, a pendant nucleophile, such as an alcohol here, again, work from the, uh, the group of Minshi has shown that you can form quite large eight membered rings by harnessing that carbocation. So we can see that these methylene cyclopropanes can be both electrophilic and nucleophilic and involve both ring expansion reactions and also ring preservation reactions. Now moving on to the vinylidine cyclopropanes, these look rather more exotic. And, and, and one thing I'd like to highlight uh, as I go through these is that a lot of these strain molecules, they are, they are actually quite, they're relatively easy to prepare and store. It's only in the presence of an activating catalyst that we, we have this activation. And so the vinylidine cyclopropanes can be prepared from a vinylidine carbene. Typically, you might generate that from a dibromo cyclopropane in a base and the reaction of an alkene. These are really intriguing systems because they're amphiphilic. In the presence of activation by gold on the, the allene unit, they can uh, undergo nucleophilic attack or reaction with electrophiles. And you have this very nice, this dual reactivity of both the cyclopropane and the strain allene together. What I'd, I'd like to most focus on in this is the formation of these intriguing cyclobutyl carbenes that form via a ring expansion reaction. So I'll show you that on this next slide here. So this is again, group uh, work from the, the she group that uh, have really been the pioneers in vinylidine cyclopropane chemistry. So we get the coordination to the internal double bond. We get the ring expansion. Of course, we can represent that cyclobutyl carbene as the gold stabilized cat cation or the carbene. And in the presence of this uh, pendant alkene, we can see the carbene nature of that and you get an intramolecular cyclopropanation to this quite remarkable multi-cyclic cyclopropane and cyclobutane containing skeleton. Interestingly, they, they do observe electrophilic reactivity when you have ortho substitution here that appears to enhance the nucleophilicity of the oxygen tether so we get a cyclization as follows, and then an allyl transfer reaction and uh, a loss of gold to give this methylene cyclopropane containing products. So quite remarkable complexity building reactions. Finally, the final slide I'd like to talk about on the vinylidine cyclopropanes is uh, actually ring opening of the three-membered ring. So typically we see nucleophilic attack of allene systems 
um, in the presence of gold on the pi bond. But because we have this appended, it's conjugated three-membered ring with the appropriate uh, appended nucleophile, in this case an alcohol, you can have attack on the ring and preserve the allene in the product, which is, of course, very valuable. So you have coordination at the internal position here, nucleophilic attack that relieves some of the strain inherent in the ring, and then after proto-demethylation, you get your allene with an appended tetrahydropyran. So this is really a quite a nice way to make these heterocyclic systems with the allene available for, for future functionalization. And I think there's some quite good opportunities here for, for making larger rings. Now I'd like to move on to the, the cyclopropenes. And that's, uh, I'd also like to highlight a, a very good review by Jenny Cossey that came before our chemical reviews article on cyclopropene chemistry, if you want to read more about this. So what I'd like to talk about for the cyclopropenes is the fact that these are the most strained member of, of this family. Uh, so that's because we've got the, and it makes them a perfect um, substrate for gold catalysis because of the combination of the strain and the fact that the hybridization of these two carbons where this double bond is, is, is about SP 1.2. So it's an acetylene-like system. So you can consider this to be more like a triple bond than, than a double bond, which makes it a very nice binding site for carb uh, carbophilic Lewis acid, such as gold. Upon binding to gold, the typical mode of reactivity is ring opening, although I'll show you an example where it doesn't ring open and takes advantage of the the, the the acetylene-like acidity of um, the cyclopropene when one of these groups is a hydrogen. This ring opening process occurs by either the cleavage of this bond or the other bond to form a gold vinyl carbene. The regioselectivity of that, that ring opening has been studied by ourselves uh, in, in collaboration with Ali Reza Arifat at the University of Tasmania, and it's shown that the nature of the, the the pi donor nature of these substituents drives, drives the, this reaction. So for example, if R3 is a stronger pi donor, we see cleavage of the bond away from the, the pi donor. These gold vinyl carbines, so cyclopropenes are a very good way, a very good substrate to generate gold vinyl carbines. And the, these intermediates can be harnessed in cyclopropanation reactions and either direct nucleophilic attack or vinologous nucleophilic attack. So I'll show you a, a few key examples of this reactivity. So uh, in work from uh, Christoph Meyer and Janine Cosi and co-workers, they demonstrated that you, you can carry out this regioselective ring opening of the cyclopropene with a pendant alkene. So it's the red bond here that's being cleaved to form this vinyl gold carbene. And then it, there's a diastereoselective selective cyclopropanation via this favored transition state to, the, to, the, to this biocycle. And that occurs with really exquisite diastereoselectivity. One thing I might point out is, here is that this gem dimethyl unit um, is often present when you want these ring opening reactions because it's stabilizing the buildup of positive charge at that, that C3 position. Ilan Lee is a, a, another big player in the cyclopropene field uh, and her group has demonstrated, has investigated thoroughly the nucleophilic attack on these gold vinyl carbines. And these are just a couple of examples. So in the presence of alcohols, you get the formation of allylic ethers. And in the presence of thiols, you get the, uh, the vinyl species. So these both occur via the ring opening reaction. This is obviously unsubstituted at the C1 and C2. So there's no regioselectivity issue. The thiol attacks directly, uh, directly adjacent to the gold, and, and this is proposed to be uh, a result of it being a soft nucleophile, whereas the alcohol attacks in a vinologous fashion to form, form the allylic ether. In work uh, from our own group, uh, in collaboration with uh, the Hashmi group, we've harnessed the electrophilic character of these gold vinyl carbines by appending a heterocyclic nucleophile. And this has enabled us to develop a, a formal three plus, four plus three cycle addition to form these, these, these functionalized um, bicyclic seven-membered rings. So what happens is that the fewer end behaves as a nucleophile attacking in a vinologous fashion. That then, and the fact that we generate an oxonium ion now means that we can have, we can, intramolecularly trap the vinyl gold species to close up and, and form this seven-membered ring. And that occurs with uh, complete 
diastereoselectivity, selectivity, and this bicycle maps onto several important naturally occurring compounds. So I've spoken a lot about ring opening, um, and in all of these systems, we had a, a substituent at the C3 that would facilitate the buildup of a, a positive charge at that point. And so the final cyclopropene example I'd like to show you is an example where the ring is preserved. And this is uh, work from the, the Hashmi group. And so the, this is a gold silver dual uh, catalysis. And this is the reaction here on the side. So it's an alkynylation process. And this is a result both of catalyst design and substrate design. So having the, the, gem, the two esters at the C3 position, of course, will discourage the ring opening. Uh, this is another nice react. This, this reaction also highlights a nice facet of the cyclopropene in that the, the CH bond here is quite acidic. The pKa is around 30, so a little bit like an alkyne. And that's why these kind of alkynylation processes uh, can take place. So this paper has a lot of nice mechanistic details. We'll just go through the, the catalytic cycle briefly, starting with the active catalyst here, uh, the gold one phenanthylene. There is an interaction with the hypervalent uh, alkynyl iodine species. So it coordinates, undergoes an oxidative addition to gold three. So this is a gold one, gold three cycle. There's then a transfer of the alkoxide to the silver. And then this reacts with a cyclopropene to activate it. So that's a CH activation of that relatively acidic cyclopropene CH to form the um, cyclopropene or silver species that then reacts with the gold alkynyl to generate this intermediate that undergoes reductive elimination to give our product and regenerate the gold one catalyst. I just got uh, the, aziridine, the aziridine and epoxide field is, is quite diverse. So I'm only gonna give you two examples uh, based on the formation of the, these, these are zeridinium intermediates and the zetidinium intermediates respectively, and then I'll fi finish up with the total synthesis example. So there are, there's quite a bit of work on propartial aziridines. Much of that results in the formation of, of pyrroles. Um, however, if you manage to bring the triple bond and you kind of separate it from the three-membered ring, then you can have cyclization reactions such as this six endo dip process that forms the reactive aziridinium ion, that can undergo nu uh, um, nucleophilic attack, in this case, shown by water, to give these rather complex seven-membered rings. More recently, that's been extended to the azetidine system. So this reaction here is formerly a ring expansion and nucleophilic attack that occurs via this intermediate here. So again, we're seeing activation, uh, not directly of, the, of the, the, the ring, but of the appended triple bond, that enables the nitrogen lone pair to wrap around, form the azetidinium intermediate, and for nucleophilic attack to form our, the, the final five member ring product. On the final slide, I'd like to show an example of, in fact, a propagilic epoxide. And like the propagilic aziridines, those can often form furans, but in this um, very nice um, gold catalyzed spiroketalization reaction, we don't see, they, the authors don't see the formation of that furan because of the, 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 the rigidity of this substrate. So what we have here is coordination of the gold to the triple bond. We have a cyclization to form the six membered ring. This then ring opens to the oxonium cation. And then we have that, that spiroketalization step to give um, this intermediate that's part of the um, ala to keto natural product. So, I will just finish on um, this side saying that there are, we've seen a lot of a diverse reactivity with these strained three-membered rings, but I think there are some missing characters and opportunities in this area. And, and one of the big ones is the methylene cyclopropane system, the heterocyclic equivalent of the methylene cyclopropane. And of course, these two ones here, so the, the allene or cyclopropane derivatives, these are synthetically accessible. Uh, and, and should display a diverse range of reactivity. The alenyl aziridine equivalent here, this has been recently reported by our group and we've investigated the palladium catalyzed reactions of this, but the combination of multiple heteroatoms and the, the alene binding site for, for the gold catalyst should present a, a lot of synthetic opportunities. And finally, the methylene, cyclobut methylene cyclobutanes are 
are also intriguing substrates. Uh, the challenge here is that the strain energy is much less, uh, but there are much fewer ways to, many fewer ways to make cyclobutane. So for example, developing gold catalyzed hydroarylation reactions of these substrates, I think would be a significant area of investigation. Uh, that leads me to uh, thank my, my co-workers and the, all of you for listening and for the kind invitation, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Yes. Thank you so much. Great insights into the ring strain as a very important thermodynamic and also reaction accelerating factor. And again, I have now to open questions and answer section. Are there questions? Well, I'm waiting whether there's some whether some questions might pop up. Chris. Yep. There are other strained molecules. So for example, the 111 propylene. Anything with that? Yep. Yeah, so look, look, that's, a, that's a good point. And I was just kind of thinking about that as I was going through the talk. I mean, obviously here we focused a lot on activation of a pi system connected to the, the three-membered ring. But of course, there are other strained systems where you don't you don't need that pi system. The gold itself could bind to the you know, these distorted the distorted bonds of these strained mm -hmm. molecules mm -hmm. so cyclopropane yeah. itself has quite a pi character so i think you're absolutely right there's mm -hmm. there's a big area of investigation here um directly activating these formal sigma bonds that are that are yeah. pi like in nature think so absolutely platinum insertions which can actually go into the cc bonds of cyclopropanes mm. I was always afraid that in gold catalysis, this might happen as well, but the cyclopropanations, as far as I see the literature, don't proceed with any subsequent ring opening of the cyclopropanes formed by gold catalyst being consumed later on. So, yeah. That's quite, yeah. yeah. That's quite right. It's, I mean, it's intriguing that first hydroarylation example, you, you, don't, you don't see any further activation or ring opening. So. Yes. Maybe yes. looking at the more the yeah more strained uh, multi-cyclic cyclopropanes, mm -hmm. we may see some of that activation. So yes. I think that's a, a yes. fertile area to look at. Yeah, yeah. I don't see any additional questions. Now would be the moment. Hmm. Otherwise, I think. Okay. Yes. Thank I, you so much. I only thank everyone. Yeah. Right, right. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today for our last chemical reviews, thematic talk series of 2021. And I want to thank our editor, Guy Bertrand, and also our guest editor, Stephen Hashney, who you've been hearing from today, for their hard work on this thematic issue. They put together a terrific issue, and it's uh, their hard work, and of course, all of the authors of this thematic issue as well. And I want to thank our four speakers for sharing their expertise and their enthusiasm about gold chemistry and giving outstanding talks. So now I want to close and let you get on with your day or night, depending on what part of the world you're in. And I want to wish everyone a happy end of the year and a prosperous new year. And I hope to see all of you in 2022 for other topics that we'll be covering in our Chemical Reviews thematic talk series. So please keep, keep an eye on our website and we'll be um, posting information about those early in 2022. So for now, thanks to everyone. And again, thank you to the speakers and to Stephen for, uh, for leading this great event and to all of you who are listening.